Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing the Yusuko bronze problem, cow tipping. This is from the 2017 January contest. If you would like, you can look up this problem right now and pause the video, read through it yourself and understand what the problem is asking. Then once you're ready, come back to the video. So the quick summary of this problem is that you are given an n by n grid of cows. And so I have, to, I have the sample input drawn right here. So you have a three by three grid in the sample input and each of these cells represents a given cow. Now the cows can be in two different states. They can be a zero if they are considered untipped and they are a one if they are considered tipped. And now what you need to do or what you are allowed to do is you're allowed to select any as many times as you want, so you may select a given and a given upper left rectangle of the grid. So any rectangle that covers the top left corner of the grid. So you're allowed to choose this rectangle, or this rectangle, or this rectangle, or any other rectangle that, con that contains this corner. You just can't choose something like, for example, this rectangle because this rectangle doesn't include the top left corner. So you can choose any one of those rectangles and you can toggle the rectangle, which is equivalent to switching all the cows in the rectangle from zeros to ones and from ones to zeros. And you, now we, we need to find out what is the minimum number of toggles, the minimum number of operations we need to transform the entire array to all zeros, all untipped cows. So as an example, for this, pro, for this sample case, the answer is two. So we would first choose one possible solution. So we first choose this rectangle and that's going to flip it to this, right? Because we flip all the zeros to ones and vice versa. And then we're going to go ahead and choose this rectangle. And then we're going to just transform that into all zeros. And so that would be two different moves. And if you play around with this test case, you'll find that you can't do better than two. And so now we ask the question of how do we generally solve this for any set of an n by n grid? And n is, uh, can be as large as 10. So this might seem challenging at first because there's no immediate sort of, uh, I guess, bash solution or a series of combinations that you can try, right? It's not obvious whether or not we should attempt to flip a given rectangle. So we're going to want to make some observations to simplify this problem. Well, we can make a few observations. If you play around with the grid enough, to, enough and if you just like kind of try different uh, operations, you will notice that first off, there is no sense in flipping a rectangle more than once. So each rectangle or each, each upper left rectangle is flipped at most once. And this is pretty easy to see because what you're doing when you flip a given rectangle is you're toggling all the cells in that rectangle. So if you toggle a rectangle twice, right? Look, if I change, if I toggle this one once to make it zero, zero, but then I toggle it again, that just switches it back to one, one. It's the same thing as not toggling it at all. So it only makes sense to toggle a given sub rectangle either one time or not toggle it at all. The second observation we can make, and this is a bit less obvious, but if you play around with this enough, you'll notice that the order of which of like toggling the rectangles doesn't matter. And this is true because if you consider what a toggle operation does, it essentially, it, it flips a given each of the cells in the rectangle to one time, right? It flips them one time. And if you let's say we have three different operations, I'm going to go ahead and clear this image so you can better see it. I'm going to remove this. But say we toggle this rectangle, this rectangle, and this rectangle. And if you look at this cell, right? It doesn't matter what order we do it in, this cell is always going to get toggled three times. Regardless of what order we do it in, it's going to get hit three times by three different rectangles. And so its end result, it's going to always be one, regardless of what order we do it in. In general, and if we hit a cell or if we toggle a cell an odd number of times, we flip it, 
And if we toggle it an even number of times, then we don't change the cell value. And this should be relatively intuitive. If you and so the order of this doesn't really matter, right? All that matters is how many times we've hit a given cell with a rectangle over the entire process. So that's nice. That means that we can we don't have to really worry about the order in which you do this. That kind of like reduces the problem down by a lot because now we just need to check for each given rectangle, for each possible sub rectangle, do we toggle it or do we not? Well, how well I guess how do we know now if a given rectangle should be toggled or not? Well, if we draw out some of the sub rectangles, right? Like for example, there's this one, there's this one, there's that one. You can draw out a few of these. But you'll notice that more, the closer this cell, this cell right here, the top left one gets, is touched by a lot of different sub rectangles. This one, not as much. And this one, not as much as those two. In fact, the closer we get to the top left corner, the more sub rectangles you are affected by. And so what this means is that, well, maybe we should consider like looking at, for example, this bottom right cell, because this bottom right cell is going to get toggled the least number of times or it's affected by the least number of sub-rectangles. Let's look at the cell. How many rectangles affect this cell? The answer is one, just this one. Why is that important? Well, whether or not we should tog toggle this one rectangle is uniquely determined by the value of the cell because no other sub-rectangle, no other upper left rectangle in this, in this grid can possibly fix or readjust this bottom right cell. Only this rectangle is capable of doing that. So this is a one, and we have no choice but to flip this entire rectangle if we want to get the right, uh, if we want to fix the grid. So let's just go ahead and toggle this rectangle, right? We're forced to do it, we have no other choice. That gives us this. All right, now let's consider Let's move to now. Let's consider this cell. How many sub rectangles will affect this cell? The answer is two this one and that one. But we can't flip this, this giant rectangle anymore because we already flipped it to take care of this cell over here. If we flip it again, we're just reversing the work that we've already done, right? So we, we actually can't flip this cell or this rectangle anymore because we already considered it. So there's really only one rectangle left over that we're allowed to flip to adjust this bottom right corner. And what that means is that once again, we're left in the same scenario. Whether or not we flip this given rectangle is uniquely determined by this bottom right corner. And so in this case is a zero, so we don't flip it. Now let's consider this cell. How many rectangles affect this? It'll be one, two, three, but once again, we can't flip these two because we already consider them. So really, once again, this whether or not we flip this rectangle is uniquely determined by the value of this bottom right corner of this cell. And in this case, we don't flip it. After that, you go to here, then there, then there. And in general, you move up the rows. And on each row, we move from right to left. And it should be obvious, or maybe not obvious, but you'll probably notice by now that you're not going to, or each time, by the time you reach a given cell, the rectangle of which this cell is the bottom right corner of, that rectangle's state is uniquely determined by the cell because you've already visited every single other sub rectangle that could possibly affect the cell. So now you have to choose, make the pivotal decision at this given cell to flip the rectangle or not. There's really no choice involved. And so that's going to be our final algorithm. We're just going to, it's actually quite simple. We're just going to loop starting from the last row up to the top, up to the first row and from the last column up to the first column. And then at each point, if it's a one, we flip the entire sub rectangle. And if it's, and we add one to the answer. And if it's a zero, we don't flip the entire sub rectangle. So let's go ahead and code that up. All right, so the first thing you have to do is we have to read from a file called caltip.in and write to a file called caltip.out since that's how Usco works. Okay. 
Awesome. The next step is we have to since we have to read an integer called n, and then we're going to read in n subsequent lines, each containing a string of n characters representing, I guess, the row value. So like it will be 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So let's just read in n different strings to represent the different row values. I'm going to store them in a global array of size 10. All right, so now we can uh, now that we have the input, this is just taking an input, we can actually begin the algorithm. So we're going to start from the last row and work our way up. For each row, we're going to start from the last column, work our way up. And now what happens? Well, if the cell Is a one, then we have to toggle that rectangle, right? Because that is the because the rectangle that we're currently at is the one that we must toggle in order to fix this given cell. So this would be toggle the rectangle with bottom right corner as i j, and this is uh, the row i column j. So I'm going to use a yeah. So we're just going to loop from the first row up to the i-th row. And from the first column up to the j-th column. <clears throat> and if we're just gonna toggle each cell, it should be a and b. So if grid of a and b is one or zero, I guess, I'll do zero first. Let me switch to a one and vice versa. And last but not least, we have to count the number of times we flip a given rectangle, right? So I'm just going to store this in a variable called answer, or ans for short. And each time we toggle a rectangle, I'm going to increment a, our answer by one. And at the very end, I'm just going to go ahead and print our answer. Awesome. So let's see if this works. So I've already created a file called calcit.in with the sample input inside, and I've created a calcit.out file. So when I run this, I expect to see the answer of two inside the calcit.out file. And indeed, I see two. All right. Let's see if this works on the rest of the test cases. Cool, our program works. All right, so that is how you solve uh, the Usico problem, cow tipping. It was a it was a problem that looked intimidating at first, but we made three crucial observations to break down the problem to something we can solve. And to recap, the three observations, well, I guess really two observations, and then the actual algorithm. So the or three. So the first observation we made was that each rectangle can be flipped at most once. The second observation we made is that the order doesn't matter. And I guess the third observation would be that we go in this order. So yeah, from the bottom row, <clears throat> going up from the bottom row up and from the right column left. So that's going to be it for this problem. Thank you for watching.